Hey YouTube, I am Faj and welcome to another episode of HO Scale Model Railroader. Uh, as the title implies, we're going to be uh, painting chassis locomotives. Um, a challenging project, if you will. Uh, a friend of mine has a layout that's uh, in progress. He's running trains on it. We've had a couple operation uh, sessions there. It's the uh, Chessy System Thomas Subdivision and it's modeled around 1980. Um, right after becoming friends with Andrew, he uh, asked me if I thought I could paint some Chessy locomotives for him. I said, sure! And uh, at that moment in time, I didn't appreciate the challenges that would go along with agreeing to that. But uh, we've both learned a lot. Uh, we used a lot of uh, prototypical pictures uh, to help us decide on the paint. The paint was the very most was the most frustrating part of this because you can't find vermilion anymore. You can't find CNO blue anymore. You can't find CNO yellow anymore, uh, or as as available as it once was. Okay, so here's a look at some of the prototypes we uh, we found on the internet to go along with this project. I was really looking for any real pictures that I could have as a comparison to what these locomotives look like as far as being prototypical and it, you know I got into this project and I was pretty excited about it and I was thinking oh you know I'm all big and bad I can uh, I can do this it shouldn't be a problem but in the end it turned out to be a really huge challenge for me a challenge that I, I enjoyed but at the same time I learned a lot from and that's the important thing about you know when you're doing any kind of hobby you always want to try to learn from something so uh, these were the pictures that we used as the prototypical pictures uh, it allowed me to see the varying differences in some of these locomotives and now uh, we're gonna take a look at an actual model and some close-up pictures of uh, what they look like this here is an Atherin SD 40-2 uh, it belongs to the client and uh, I really took some close-up photos of it to have something to compare it by looking at prototypical pictures is really good for a project but sometimes you can't get the up-close detail that you can uh, from looking at a factory model now based on the clients uh, statement about this locomotive it's it's pretty pretty close to to being what we wanted to do uh, but not really some of the colors didn't match up in the right ways and uh, but again just just trying to get as much information about uh, a project is is the key thing um, like in this next coming picture here you're going to see the the yellow on the bottom the vermilion in the middle and then the blue on the top and how it cuts by the rear cab window and even the blue goes under the sunshade so right there on the window on on the window uh, edges you got three different colors you got yellow vermilion and blue so those type of details you really want to see where they are because they're going to help you with your taping here taking a look at the front of the cab you can see you got bl uh, got blue on on the frame and the walkways uh, yellow on the horizontal pieces uh, a blue verme or a vermilion stripe that comes around the front of the nose and then the top of the nose is blue um, this this I know is going to present some challenges for me but again looking at everything um, just anytime you do a heavy project just get as much information as you can now on this side over here, uh, this uh, this is gonna <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Uh, you'll notice uh, the and forgive me if I don't know all the prototypical names of everything, but right there on the left side, on the fireman side, in front of the Chessie Cat, you'll see that hump that comes out from the uh, from the side of the shell. I don't know what that is, but uh, I know it's gonna be uh, challenging when we get to the point of uh, painting it. So. Um, Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, the paint we used. So here we go. Uh, here's the Signal Yellow and the uh, CNO Enhancement Blue and the Scarlet uh, paint we decided to use from Polyscale. Now I was scared to death of this because it was acrylic. Uh, here's our um, here's our little toys. These are uh, Concor locomotives, uh, SD. 38s and SD40s and the client really loved these because of the molded on details I mean you can see these little locomotives look great he found them uh, used uh, but never uh, used I guess you could call that used but um, got them undecorated 
And that was nice too because I didn't have to go through the process of, of having to strip the paint off. I never really liked to put my, uh, my shells uh, in any type of chemical to strip them because I'm always afraid that it's going to weaken the plastic. So getting these things undecorated was really cool. Now the next item you're going to see is something that blew me away. Uh, when we started researching this further, uh, we found out that Chessie had a rock plow or a rock pilot and they didn't use a conventional snow plow and once we dug into this uh, to, to make it look like we wanted it to look um, we decided to uh, track these things down I found a few on eBay that was made by Details West and I'm sure they're still out there the really cool part about these is they actually come with a template well not a template but they come with a drawing to help you create a template for being able to mount or uh, to mount the plow to the front of the frame so what we ended up doing here as you can see right here um, it has uh, it tells you where you need to put the holes so all you really had to do was to come up with some type of um, plastic or something to make you a jig out of and then hold that up in front of the locomotive well immediately I turned to uh, my little batch of styrene and um, you can see it on the back side there it'll be flipped over in a minute but I basically cut this this template paper out squared it up and then I glued it onto a piece of uh, styrene that would hold it in place and uh, went ahead and punched the holes through the paper template through the styrene and that gave me uh, a way to hold this um, this template on the front of uh, the locomotive and be able to uh, mount the the, uh, the plow <coughs> excuse me the plow perfectly because you don't want these things on there crooked and I mean you want them centered and you want to do everything you can to to make them look right uh, this is a uh, photo here with the uh, with the plow um, uh, with the plow mounts pushed through the uh, the styrene, and uh, I think we're going to see a picture of what that looks like right here. All right, so now you can see what the little jig, the template looks like with the um, with the uh, plow mounted on it. So now basically we're just going to go ahead and uh, put this on the front of the locomotive. Now, as you can see, if you haven't noticed it, yeah, we got a problem. I'll give you a second for you to uh, to take that in. If you look at the front of this thing closer, you're going to see that the uh, the coupler box there, the molded on coupler box, really protrudes from the front of this thing. And uh, I was like, this is going to be a problem. As you can see there in this photo, uh, a lot of that coupler box had to uh, had to go bye bye. So uh, what we um, what I ended up doing was giving this thing some thought, thinking about the best way to get rid of it. Uh, I thought about an X-Acto knife, but sometimes X-Acto knives can slip. So uh, what I ended up doing was taking this thing and using a um, a little um, uh, a little sanding tool uh, that goes in a Dremel, and you can see there in the background where I went ahead and trimmed the front of it off and the step off of the uh, the front of the frame. So here's the uh, one on the left that I did and the one on the right uh, that I've not done yet. You can see how much I had to take off. Um, I can tell you, when you're working with these things with a Dremel tool, be really careful. Go real slow. Wear safety glasses. Um, and just be careful because if that Dremel gets away from you, uh, it'll eat up something and mess it up. So we got this squared up, and I said, you know what? Uh, this looks pretty good. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to leave it alone and um, see what happens and uh, now we're going to move on to the sunshades. Now I fought on this thing for several days. I mean really just frustrating myself trying to come up with a jig for this thing. And then the end I said you know what I said I'm just going to take this thing and put it on there and see what happens. I said Lord show me how to do this. Now the sunshades uh, that we used were just basic Atlas sunshades. Uh, the one thing that you do want to be careful about these things, and I'm going to talk about it later, is that well, when you buy them, there's always some kind of flashing. Um, the leftover portion from where uh, the plastic part was uh, was molded from the factory, and you want to make sure and take that off. If not, it's uh, it'll 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 take away from the details. So what I decided to basically do was just take a sunshade, flip it upside down, put a piece of tape on it and then mount it to uh, the top of the locomotive and just let it hold in place and you're going to see that right here in just a moment in a picture so basically there you go I lined it up 
uh, where I thought it should be. I grabbed a magnifying glass and a straight edge to make sure that it was level. And um, we, um, it, it seemed to work. And I said, you know what, I'm going to try it. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I tried it on one of my locomotives first to make sure that it would work. And, and it did. We just lined it up by sight and got it in there where we needed it to be at. Now, when you go about doing this, as you can see here, I use my trusty little pick just to mark the plastic. So when you put the drill bit on it, the drill bit will not dance on the plastic. And what I mean by dancing is if there's not some type of indentation for the drill bit to stay in, when you start to, uh, to twist it, uh, it'll start moving all over the place. So you can't really see it in this picture, but I put a nice little little mark in there, leaving enough room from the... the um, the, uh, the ridge line there so that the bit wouldn't turn into it. Um, used a number 0.71 or 0.77 uh, drill bit for this and there's the results. Uh, it looked great. I mean I, I couldn't be more happy with it. They were nice and level. Uh, so uh, the next step was to, uh, to grab a, a sunshade and uh, see if it would fit. All right, so now we got our holes drilled. Uh, here again, we talked about this flashing before this leftover molded plastic from the factory on these sunshades, or for that matter, any particular part. I'll try to zoom in on this thing here for you. It's right at the uh, tip of the tweezers that I'm holding the sunshade with. You want to get rid of that prior to installation. The best way I found to do that is to take a sanding pad, or in my case, because I'm cheap, a um, a paper fingernail file and just lightly and slightly work on this thing until it disappears. Alright, there's the one that uh, we worked over. Uh, it looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it. We didn't take anything off that we didn't need to. There's the finished product. Turned out really good, really level, uh, looked good. I was very uh, happy with the way uh, it attached uh, to the side of the locomotive, uh, the angle. Everything looks great. Uh, so I'm pretty satisfied with uh, the way this uh, turned out. So that wraps up part one. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you will to see part two of this video when it comes out. I should have that up in a couple of weeks. And uh, as always, rate, comment, share. Y'all take care. See ya. Bye.